me a dirt bike. What's up, everybody? So today I'm gonna show y'all how to install an LED whip pole on your Route to 700, and I'm gonna show you guys how to install a new grab bar. Also, cause y'all see I already have my pole on, but today I'm gonna be changing my grab bar out as well. I ordered this grab bar from. I may say his last name wrong, but his first name is David Colt on Facebook. I was scrolling on the Route to 700 in 2006 plus or the Route to 700 2015 plus Facebook page. And I ran across somebody who recently bought a grab bar from him. It was the neon green. So I contacted him. You know, he got back to me as soon as he could. I ordered this and he got it shipped out to me like, as soon as possible. Uh, easy person to work with, good customer service. Like if you ever ran across, you know, the post on Facebook yourself and you're thinking about ordering one from him, like, don't hesitate. Like, great customer service. He'll get it out to you as fast as he could. And I say, look real good. I got a powder coated blue. Great customer service. So, like I said, don't hesitate. You know, if you saw this on Facebook and you want to order one, just go ahead and do it. And then at the end of the video, we're going to have a discussion about, like, if you are looking to buy the LED pole, I'm going to show y'all what to look out for. Because as y'all see, this is my second pole right here. This was my first one. I had problems with it. And when I ordered this one, I had some problems. But we're going to talk about that at the end of the video. But I'm just going to go on and show y'all now, you know, how to install it. Okay, the tools you're going to need for this install, you're going to need Phillips head screwdriver, wire cutter, and wire scrippers. You're going to need some wire. I went to Walmart and got some speaker wire. I need this Allen wrench to take my exhaust off to unscrew. Right there. You're gonna need a fuse puller. You can find this in your car on um, by your fuse box. And you're gonna need some sockets and you know the socket wrench. And you're gonna need some electrical tape. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the muffler off. Of my
Okay, I got my exhaust morph law. But before I continue to take, you know, the grab bar off, I'm going to take my current LED pole off. Because as y'all see, it's mounted right here to the original grab bar. So now I'm going to take this one off before I continue to take the grab bar off. Okay, I got my original pole off. Now I'm going to continue to take the stock grab bar off. Okay, once you unscrew these two, you're gonna have to come up here and unscrew this one. You got to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I got the grab bar on bolted from both sides so okay, this is my first time doing this as well so as you see this the grab bar is going to drop down you just slide this from inside of your plastic then you come to the other side slide it down Okay, you see how the grab bar is hanging, so I'm just going to pull it up. see the grab bar came off okay i got the stock grab bar off i do not know yet if i'm gonna need to take these off to put on a new grab bar but we will see when we try to put it on that's the old one Okay, I already have the new grab bar out. So the only thing, you will not need those little rubber pieces from the stock bar if you're changing your grab bar. So the only thing you have to do is just put your new grab bar on. And I'm going to show y'all how to do that. You're just going to really just put it on how you took the old one off. Just pull this down a little bit so you'll be able to clear these little plastic notches on the side.
And then when you put it, you know, put it on before you bold it, make sure that, you know, your bar piece is behind this piece. Then you want to do the same thing on the other side. It's not behind it yet. Let's just make sure you put this behind it. Or maybe it can go in the front. We'll see when I try to put it on, when I try to bolt it up. Then this is important too. See these, this right here. Make sure you put that up under right here in that little, it's like a little C slot. So make sure you put that in between like the little C slot or there's one on each side. Okay, so I have the grab bar on and I have my exhaust muffler back on. The next thing you want to do is mount your pole in the little mount hole right there. And your pole should come with a a washer and a bolt. So you want to make sure you tighten it down real good. I'm going to leave it kind of loose right now. So the next thing you want to do, you want to figure out where you want to run your wires through. Let's see. I don't know if y'all can see, but I'm going to try to run my wires through here on the side of where my air box is at. and I'm gonna mount the power box in here okay so this is where your electric tape and your wire cutters and scrippers are gonna be real important so what I like to do when I run wire anywhere in my car or wherever I'm running wire if I can I'm gonna take these two together you know, so they won't be flopping all over the place. And then after that, I'm gonna screw these wires out a little bit. So I got my control box right here. Next, what I'm gonna do, this right here has to connect to that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this down beside the air box. Man, that's going to come right here. Yeah, I just can connect it.
Okay, I got that connected and screwed in. So this is where, you know, I said the tape gonna be real and poor. You wanna waterproof this as much as you can. So you're gonna wrap electrical tape over this. Okay, this part is very important. So with this ground and this power wire, what I do for the power, I don't run it to the battery. What I do, I come down in my fuse box and for both powers, it's a power right here too at the set at the opposite end of the control box. So what I do, I use the signal and the head on uh, fuse spots for my two red wires and for my ground wires I ground those you know to the ground of the battery I do not ground I mean I do not run the power to the battery because my first LED pole that I ever had when I ran the power to the battery it malfunctioned the power box so now I just run my power to a fuse. Okay, for this part, you're gonna need your speaker wire cause you're gonna need something long enough to reach your fuse box. So you're just gonna screw up a little bit of your speaker wire. And then you're gonna tie this in on your red. And what I do, this speaker wire here has a white screw, and this one does not have a screw. So I know the white screw is my power. So you're going to connect this, just wrap it around. Then you're gonna get the tape again and tape that. Do not, okay, when you just, when you um run these wires, just go ahead and tape them off, you know, separately. Do not tape both of these together so they can touch. You, you're gonna have a fire or you know your pole gonna mess up Make sure you tape it up real good. Then you're going to do the same thing. What we did with this wire up here, you're going to run that on the side of the air box. See, I got it coming through on the side of the air box right there. I got a lot of access wire, so I'm just going to clip this off a little bit. And then I'm going to connect it to one of these fuses right here. Okay, so when you get your first power wire ran, you want to do the same thing for the first ground wire. So all I did was ran another piece of wire through. 
on the side of the air box and I'm bringing it through, looped it under here, looped it under the, and when I get ready to connect it, all I have to do is connect it to the ground terminal right there. So now I'm going to do the same thing for this other opposite side of the control box. I really can just connect it like that, but I'm just gonna run a piece of a small piece of wire from here, one of the fuses, then I'm gonna make another ground wire and take that to the battery also. Okay, so I have both powers ran and connected. So I just connect the one power to one ten fuse and the other one to another 10 out fuse I got both of my grounds ran on the side then I come up here and it's connected to the battery so I'm gonna explain that one more time so I did not hook my powers up to the battery I just connected them to two 10 amp fuses in the fuse box and then I ran both my grounds to the battery so it's pretty simple got my control box right there and then when you try to close this it may, it may not close all the way so just what I do is I just run a few scripts of electrical tape across it. So my fuse box did close all the way but if yours happens to not close all the way just run a few scripts of electrical tape across it and it should be good. And that's pretty much it. How to install the LED pole and install the grab bar. So I'm gonna get my remote and turn it on for y'all. Let y'all see how it look. Okay, so this is the remote that came with my LED pole. So I'm gonna turn it on. As you can see, it's white now. Okay, I have this auto mode. The auto mode is going to flip through the different light modes it has. Then I have, okay, you got the brightness setting. Then you had the speed setting. So it kind of going slow. Now I can speed it up. Or I can slow it down. So. I think it has maybe... It said 99 cents, but I don't think it's that many. I'm gonna have to do a video at night so y'all can really see it. So of course you got the solid color modes. And that's pretty much it. 
So you got the new grab ball. On. I showed y'all how to install the LED pole if y'all want one. So I hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned for the next upload. Okay, now I'm going to tell you guys what to stay away from if you're in the market for an LED pole because, you know, I've been having problems, you know, with mine and I try and I want to help y'all, you know, try to avoid those problems. So the first thing, say you're on, you know, eBay, Amazon or whatever site that you shop on. And, you know, you come across an LED pole and, you know, you're reading the description and you're looking at the pictures. If you come across, you know, a picture of them showing, you know, the LED power box or the control box. And if the control box is like as small as the end of this screwdriver stay away from it because there's no way that's going to handle 12 volts and within the first week and maybe the first day of use it's going to malfunction and you know it will not respond to the remote it won't change colors and, and within a week it may even start working completely so that's what happened with my first LED pole right here, you know, I bought it and I hooked it up and the control box was maybe not bigger than yeah, this whole screwdriver right here. Then when I sent, you know, turned it on, sent 12 volts to it, you know, it worked fine probably the first day. But after that, it wouldn't, you know, respond to the remote. It wouldn't change colors. The only color it would do, it would stay white. And then maybe a few weeks later, half of the pole was white. And then the other side of it was like orange. And a month later, it stopped working. It wouldn't come on. It wouldn't respond to the remote. So, like I said, if you're looking and then if the power box is a smaller than screwdriver, just stay away from it. And then I had the same problem with this pole, too, when I first bought it. I mean, you can see this pole... Like it's way, you know, it's bigger than it's uh, current than my first pole, and it's you know better quality than the first pole. But I still, they still sent me uh, the same control box that was about this small, and I hooked it up. I mean, it worked for the first five minutes. It was responding to the remote. It was changing colors. Then when I came back to turn it on, that power box for this one started malfunctioning. So I had to contact the seller. And of course, their, you know, distributor is across seas and China. So I had to wait maybe two months before I got, they sent me this power box right here, which should have came with the LED pole in the first place. As y'all can see, this is a much bigger, much beefier control box. It should have came with this in the first place, but, you know, I had to wait a month and a half, you know, of course there supplies you know cross seas in china and imagine if i had to wait on this during you know what's going on right now i probably would still be waiting on the control box as we speak so thankfully you know i 
ran into this problem before this real world situation started, you know, happening. Then another thing, say you're on, you know, your shopping site, stay away. I know you want to try to save money, but stay away from the lower price LED poles. Just go ahead, you know, and spend, you know, a decent amount of money. It just gets you a good, decent, high-quality LED pole. You won't regret it. You will not regret it. Because that's what I did with that first pole. You know, I saw a cheap one. I was like, oh, I'm going to save some money. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. And then a week later, it wasn't even working right, so... If you can, I know y'all want to save money, but just go ahead and buy you a good, high-quality LED pole. This is a spiral one. And this one is just like a straight up and down script. Okay, another thing. When you're buying these LED poles, both of these are, you know, dismountable poles. But, you know, when you're riding, I'm going to show y'all, y'all see how this moving. When you're riding, you know, the pole going to be swinging, you know, all different directions. So, it's going to mess, you know, your dismount point up. So, I cannot dismount this anymore. So, it won't dismount at all so that's another thing like if you're in the market for an led pole that's another problem you may run into your dismount may not dismount anymore let's see if i can show y'all real quick i'm supposed to be able to just slide this piece down and pull it out let y'all see It won't come out, so just be mindful of that. That may be another problem that you'll run into if you get an LED pole. 